Hey guys, it's coffee time, and uh, yeah, I'm supposed to look super professional today. What are you? I keep inspecting this. It's not a zit. I know that, but I'm not sure what what it is. It keeps like this is gonna be totally gross. It keeps like randomly like if I if I mess with it too much, it'll get super angry and get like really red. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But maybe someday it'll either go away or blossom into something else so that it can eventually go away. That's my hope. I, <laughs> I, I hate stuff like this. Where I'm like, what are you? Super frustrating. Actually, my least favorite, this is going to be the gross episode. My least favorite is when you feel something like brewing underneath your skin. Like there's like a, like there's like a little sore spot and when you feel it, like the area underneath it is like tougher than the rest of your skin and you're like but you're not anything yet frustrating hate it i hate it um i realize that i've been using the same cup for days i will switch cups eventually i swear i just keep taking it over there and washing it putting more coffee in it it uh I have a friend who uses the same exact coffee cup every single day. I don't think that this is super gross. I know people who would. I have a friend who uses the same coffee cup every day. And um, he has never washed it. He bought it like a month and a half ago or something. And he claims that because the coffee is so hot, it's disinfecting it <laughs> each time that he uses it anew. And I'm like, all right, I'll let you, I'll let you go ahead and do that kind of weird but I'll let you go ahead and do that um, but I I always prefer to clean my cups I don't know why I guess cuz like as the day goes on you never know what sort of like insects have been just like chilling in your cup not that insects creep me out too much but I don't know I heard I don't know if this is true or not anybody who knows about flies is it true that every single time that they land they poop I'm intrigued to know because I know that I've seen a fly land and leave and then there's like a little dot of something and I'm like, you pooed. But sometimes flies land because you're attacking them <laughs> because they're like flying through your space and you're like, fly! And then it lands for safety and there's there's no dark spot left behind. So, I don't know. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite science classes of all time was when my teacher was like, here's something that you can use as a conversation starter in the future. And we went, okay. And she was talking about how flies have a stick gene, how some flies... <laughs> oh, goodness, this is awesome. How some flies um, have a genetic mutation where when they bang their lady fly friend, they get stuck, and then the two of them starve and die together. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's so funny, but I think I think of it sometimes, just like randomly, and I really want to bring it up, but almost every time, the company that I'm keeping, like the people that I'm around, I'm like, ah, this isn't something that I should bring up right now. Um, so instead, I'm going to tell you, internet, thousands of people, uh, yeah, the stick gene. Good times, good times. I almost, after we heard about that, I almost wrote a play that was entirely humans acting out strange things that animals do. But I was like, this would get pornographic really quick. I thought it would be really funny, though. And the stick gene would be one of them. You wouldn't see them actually bang. The curtain would rise as they're already stuck together. And they would have, like, a really intense conversation about how they realized that they were going to die together. But, you know. And you, ha you have to understand... This wouldn't be um, animal things living within a human world. It would be humans acting out the lives of animals. So anybody who would watch it and go, why didn't they just go to the hospital? Missing the point. Totally missing the point. <laughs> I say, pretentiously, with artist face. So yes. <laughs> the things that I've thought about doing with my time. Oh yes. Oh yes. Animals are cool. I really enjoy animals. I've been, I've been missing having a pet for a while now really want some sort of an animal 
I keep going back and forth between cat and, mm, I mean, sometimes I want a dog and sometimes I want a cat. I don't know. That's the, that's the problem is I'm like, I shouldn't get an animal until I'm like focused on one or until I go, cause I visit shelters sometimes just because until I go to a shelter and have like that connection, like that moment with an animal where I go, you, when we went to, uh, I might have told this story already. I'm going to tell it again. When we went to, they had a huge, like, dog fair, basically. And, well, no, it was an animal fair. It was like, it was like a bunch of different shelters all came together and were like, here, look at our animals. And the lady, because there was a, there's a little dog. I love dogs and cats that look like they've been around the block. Like, if I see a cat who only has one eye, I'm like, oh. Or if I see a dog who has only three legs, I'm like, oh. Or if somebody tells me that the cat is blind, I'm like, oh. I love it. I I don't love that they're in that situation, but I know that I'm the type of person who would absolutely adopt an animal like that. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that because most people wouldn't. But so there was a dog who's super scrappy looking and I was like, oh, so cute. Um... It was a little girl dog, and she was black, and she had, like, like little furries coming out all over the place. And she was like, mm. And, you know, all of the dogs were freaked out. Uh, but, anywho, so this lady, I think the people who work at these things are told to, like, pull at your heartstrings as much as possible. Which I get. But, so, this lady was like, do you want to hold her? And I was like, sure. So brought her out. I held her for a while. And this lady was busting out lines constantly like, I think she's chosen you. And then she'd look at me like, do you not agree? And there's me holding this little dog and the dog is like tripping out. And there was another lady that worked there who was super honest with me. (coughs) And I was like, yeah, this dog, I mean, she's sweet, but she's, she's like, she's kind of dead like th- like there's nothing there really um she you know she does dog activities she eats she goes to the bathroom she does all this stuff but she's very vacant like personality wise which is why she's here um and when i was holding her you could tell like she was just like limp constantly or like every now and then she'd be like what's going on oh and then like go limp again i was like this is the weirdest thing ever but this lady was still busting out like all of these really excessive lines, like, don't you want her? And I was going, not really. I mean, she's sweet, but no. Um, I would much rather have a cat with one eye or a dog with three legs that every now and then interacted with me than a vacant animal. And I know that an animal like that needs just as much like care and love and attention as any other animal. But personally, if I were to say, what is this animal that I would like to have in my life for possibly a very long time? I would like to have an animal who will interact with me. So as long as it will interact with me, it can be just as messed up as it wants to be. Just kidding. I think the only thing when I was fostering kittens, the only thing that really got old was peeing problems. Olivia... And a little kitten named Olivia, she, oh my goodness, she was so frustrating. (laughs) And the lady at the shelter was like, well, just put her, um, put her in like an enclosed space with just the litter box. So she won't, like, cats really like to pee on things that, that feel really comfortable to them. So put her in the bathroom with the linoleum floor and give her just the litter box and she will only pee in the litter box. Walked in there, pee all over the linoleum and she's just staring at me like, what? (sighs) Olivia. And of course, Olivia was one of four. So I had four kittens. Olivia was the brat, 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 brat. The other three were boys. And, um, I wanted to keep Roy so bad. I named them after Full Metal Alchemist characters. So there was... Hohenheim, who we just shortened to (laughs) Ho-Ho. There was Ho-Ho, there was Roy, Al, and Olivia. And Olivia kept to her character. Holy goodness. Um, Roy was the the big burly one out of all of them. He was a little tabby and he was so cute. 
And, um, oh, no. No, it wasn't Al. It was Ed. I was like, wait, I feel like there's one missing. No, it was Ho-Ho Al. Ho-Ho Ed. Dang it. Ho-Ho Ed, Roy, and Olivia. And Roy and Ed fought constantly. So funny. Um, Ed basically fought with everybody. Ed was like the super tiny one. I loved him. I loved him so much. I was like, you're like me. Uh, animals. Um, but yeah, so I have to go to work now. <laughs> oh gosh, this is another 10 minute episode. I'm sorry. I have to go to work now. So, uh, hopefully you guys have a great day and we will talk again tomorrow. Okay. Goodbye.